Guess what time it is? It is 10 after 6. Also, but I moved this over a little because when I sit in this direction in the chair, it, I don't know. This way I can move my legs around more. That way it's more limited. So it's more uncomfortable. So anyways, Stella wasn't over here right now, but she may come over here because they're just now getting settled. It's, um, I don't know. It's been a long fucking night. I'll tell you is it yesterday was a rough day and, um, I'm just going to do some bitching here, I guess. Cause, um, so when I got the update on bacon, they call him Morty, then, um, they said he wasn't getting better and they were going to have to put a feeding tube or put him down and that, all signs were showing that he was it was just too much damage from his diabetes he's so trippy too it's like he just replay things and you have to fight against the what it should could is i'll tell you and it's so crystal clear to me like my my guidance is very clear on certain things and there is no like you you could have done it this way or that way or if it would have went this way or should have went that way or any of that it goes the way it's supposed to go and then you are supposed to it's like Things are supposed to go the way they go, and then you are supposed to evaluate it and ex evaluate the experience and learn from learn from it. And um, and this has a lot of things being highlighted in my mind of this because it started involving all these different people and it started showing holes in the system and started showing a lot of stuff. This has kind of been common through my life where there was a certain point in my life, I think it was like around my 30s. No, I think it was in my 40s. It was definitely when I was working at Deaconess Hospital. And I realized like, fuck, I'm a catalyst. Like if I go work somewhere, bet your ass that there's some kind of situation that's gonna come right straight to the surface and it's gonna show, it's weird. It's like I'm a, a what is that thing called? A wrecking ball in life. Like I go into places and it's just like I just pick up on and then, you know, right away the holes are obvious. And so I don't know. It's like I make the holes appear to some people or something. But the thing is, is you have the opportunity when the holes appear is that of how you look at it. Like you can blame people or you can look at, you know, what, what the whole situation is and see like, fuck, we got problems here. We got problems here. Look at, we should got to change this. And so then we had like this reevaluation of restructuring of, um, being able to see the holes. But the thing is that the holes, any of the things can be so triggering to people because people are so wounded. And so they overlook being able to see the things because it is like they have to find find the problem. They have to find a, a blame. And so, and there's a lot to blame, especially in this. It was fucking a circus of errors. I couldn't even fucking believe it. It just was absurd. And, and, and then plus, though, I went into it with that feeling that one night where I was like, I was feeling like that there was like his owner or something like he had this owner who was beckoning him who was you know he was ready to go you know be with his owner or something is how I was taking it that night and uh you know and I had no idea what his history is and uh, so I was like um it was hitting me that he was coming here to die that he wasn't gonna get better and so I was um I, I was like a, this, this messaging, it's, it's trippy because like when I look back at the thing to reevaluate the thing and I look into like, man, in my communication was saying this and my community, it was like, there was all of this stuff going and it, it, but even when, you know, he was where I was feeling like, you know, he's come here to die. Like he found a peace, peaceful spot to die in or something like that. And everything that's always going to happen. Like I was always, the, our paths were always going to cross. It was always going to happen this way, which is kind of sad, you know, especially if he went through a whole life not being loved. And then he came to me like his last week to get love. It just, I, I really breaks my heart. 
and um oh man i cried all yesterday my eyes are so puffy i had such a headache i went back i went to bed like at five and i kept trying to sleep and sleep my headache is still there my eyes are so puffy and it's not like you know i feel uh guilty well there's always going to be a sense of guilt like you wish you could have done more but then it's like my my guidance is very much like no things play out the way they're supposed to play out and you are supposed to learn from the things you're not supposed to try and figure out how you could have done it different to make it be a different way you just learn so then the next time something comes or for somebody else it's like you have information so you don't make the same mistakes again you don't you see things more it's like you can color it in more because even if you see the holes like in a business or whatever then you um and bringing that to the surface see all of the that stuff can be colored in fixed and then you know you may see more or whatever but in a in a state of change and like uh because uh, like life is like a river and it keeps flowing so it isn't meant to have a stagnation it isn't meant to have a, a dam built where you get stuck and stuff it's meant to be in a flow and we are here playing all these different parts for different people and i mean and some are people you don't even you've never even met it's it's trippy and and some people will take you as a good guy and some people will take you as a bad guy it depends on how they react to your energy so if they if you're a strong energy and they are put off by strong energies then that's going to make them not like you and that is something that is um uh, it's, it's like all these things are so multi because it is so many things it can be and so many things that it is and so it is um you know wherever you find yourself you're never in the wrong place so don't feel like you're doing something wrong or whatever but so in this case where you know all these things were going so weird but i kept feeling like you know he wanted to just be here and die in peace or something and so if he would have just uh you know died in his sleep then i would have just thought you know he's a little old man dog and he came here and he just was here to die in his sleep to find a place of peace and then um uh but it, that wasn't happening and everything happens exactly the way it's supposed to happen and then when you look back you can see like oh my gosh this shows this and this and this because it shows so much stuff about the vets, the price, the rescue. Like it shows so many holes in a system that's trying to accommodate another broken system. So we're just piling broken systems up on broken systems. We're not really fixing things yet. We're just, you know, haphazardly trying to save. Uh, and it's, it's different groups too, because you definitely have the givers and the takers. And that is where we all have to find balance is even the people who are all giving and giving and giving into the rescues and stuff, they've got to see the reason why they're feeling so overwhelmed and stuff is because it's, it's like, it's like you're trying to take on everybody else's problems and it's, it's hard. It's like, you're trying to save the world. So you have these people who have all this pressure, like they feel like they have to do all this stuff and save the world. And it's a burden. Then you have these other people who are just burning it down as fast as they can. And that, you know, that's what these other people live off of, this energy, this chaos. So they're happy. They don't give a shit. We're the ones who have to slow down and go like, wait a minute, we're being used here. Like, we gotta, we gotta stop. And we've got to, you know, take it slow. Let's get at our own pace. Let's take time. Let's think about things. Let's reflect. Let's look at things and really evaluate situations. Let's really try and figure out how to move ourselves out of this chaos. Because right now, what we have is people who are overreacting in fear. And they're already, especially this, uh, the stuff going on in Colorado has got people all around the place. Like they are calling out, this is a call to arms. And the, those guys are really walking around in the streets with AK, like they, it's like Venezuela. But all these things were going to happen. You got to remember, and I bet your ass that there is, um, in Colorado, that there was some shit that went on to the fucking tribes. 
So there, this energy is coming all back to the surface. So there's going to be more battles. And when we see all these people, you know, we're looking at them how they look here. But, you know, this is lots of battles, like historical things coming to the surface. Energies re-going, revisiting to play itself out. So it's things going full circle. So there's going to be, like I have been saying for a long time, different places are going to have different energy there's going to be different things playing out in all these different places and it's going to be intense there's intense shit playing out and see how we have people overreacting everywhere but also those overreactions also brings attention to get people to get more in unity because that's what brings us all together is when we all come together when we all have each other's backs when we all stop warring against each other because that's where they want to keep us is in a war against each other and and then they and they also a big part that they've created is um the war between the the has and the haves and the have nots although that the haves have barely anything that they're holding on to there's still a barrier between the have nots and the have nots are still you know taking from the haves and it's creating you know a, a lot of hostility and fear and anger and resentment and then you have the other crowd of people who are going and trying to do everything they can and has so much empathy for the homeless people and stuff and they're taking them food and stuff and then oh, there's a whole thing with all of the drugs and more crazy stuff coming to the surface like there's so many articles and shit there's so many different weird arrests there's different weird things being exposed there's just so much like this is this is like like fucking sparklers going with the information just shooting out there's just so much going right now and this is just going to be hitting all different people in all different ways. And, you know, you will, I'm sure, start seeing people go like, you know, seeing things that, uh, and, and it's hard, but, you know, we got to try not say I told you so, but I did send a message yesterday to one of my daughters. It was a, t um, cause there's on TikTok, a lot of people are sharing tweets. So I'm seeing a lot of like TikTok tweet or Twitter seems crazy right now. Um, but the um this tiktok it was saying or this tweet was saying something there i've seen so many i can't even remember but it was um something oh which by the way there is a whole thing about uh you know the thing i'm always talking about with the organs and stuff and uh what what's going on like why why do they need so many like i don't understand it well, now is come out that it is um, over in the Middle East and that they charge like it, it gave the price for the different things. It's fucking bank, man, like two hundred thousand dollars for this, five hundred thousand for this. So these rich, rich people over there and I don't know what's going on. But you got to remember, too, that some of these people are like we're we're not all the same being. Some of us are like mutts. But some beings, which I swear to God, I have said before, I think that there's some people in the Middle East who are a lot more like aliens or something. Especially when I had seen that one picture of these people over in the Middle East and like just standing and doing something. I was like, fuck, what are they, fucking Vikings or something? What are these people, huge? And... um and I think that there's just different beings that have come from different places who have set up home in these realities and kind of got captured in this, uh, uh, you know, this umbrella of control. And so, you know, there's been all sorts of different tribes and stuff. Now there's, a, you know, there's like a, a hunter, what is, what is like, um, that show called Supernatural, how they were hunters. Now there's a woman who is coming out like a whistleblower woman. And she said, yes, all that stuff is real. She's gone out and hunted werewolves and all this shit. So all this stuff just keeps coming and coming and coming. Otherwise, people are just making videos and putting them out and pretending that there's whistleblowers. But still, I think it's the information that's real is what's being released. So that's where, you know, the stuff this being, and there's so many people seeing Bigfoot. There's a nonstop Bigfoot. Bigfoot is everywhere now. And, um, uh, and there's just, 
so many crazy things. All these fish died in Greece. Uh, the, but I'm still stuck on another one. Let me go back to where I was because um, the, the, I try, hold on. I can see back. So, okay, so in the, um, so if all these organs are going to that place for all this big money, but there still is like, why are they wearing out? Like, why would they need so many that it is like this big of a thing? And so I don't know. I think there's going to be probably more information is going to come. And I was, that was something that really interests or intrigues me is like, do we have like a certain group of aliens that they run out of parts, like their parts wear out and then they just take them and put them back into new parts and that they just keep going that way or something? Like, I, I don't know. It's so strange. And there's a lot of weird shit going on in the sky. Tons of people sharing more and more videos. And over here, I've got the stomach flu I fucking again. And what I've put together is definitely because I was trying to figure out like if it was the ox bile because I was like, okay. Um, maybe it's the ox bile and that's just, uh, you know, like they're trying to get us to take this and it's only gonna be worse for us or something. So then when I was getting the stomach flu thing, I thought, okay, well, I'll stop. I'm not going to take that and let's see what happens. And then I went and sat outside again yesterday. Um, and, uh, and then we went on a long walk yesterday too. And I was outside a lot. And then, um, and I have a stomach flu thing again. And, um, and it's rough. It's not just it, like, it's rough. Like it's super painful. Like it's, I don't know. And, and you just keep going and going and you're going water and it's like, man, it's rough. And, uh, um, so I'm like, you know, something's causing it. And, uh, then I was like, I just sitting outside because I sat outside yesterday again. And then both times uh, since the ox bile thing, because then I was like, oh, it could be this, could be this. And so it stopped the ox bile, but I've sat outside. And both the days that I sat outside, then I've had a stomach flu the next day. And the, um, because there was like some more stuff about, uh, I don't know. I can't, I can't think of it good enough, but there's more stuff like with all the chemicals or something. Like there's so many more people talking about things now. And that's the thing too. What it seems like kind of stuff comes to the surface because there's so many more people talking about it. And that also gives them like they can monitor how many more people and what we're talking about and what we're saying. So they keep this, these balls in the air and see, because then it wakes more people up too. So this is like a wave and who knows if this wave will lead into the next thing. There's supposed to be some more stuff going on with the politics and stuff and now there's this whole weird thing coming out on rfk there's just like more weird shit coming out on ben affleck like this whole thing just gets weirder and weirder you just, it goes in weird directions man but now uh rfk like this is like man is this guy just the biggest dick in the world so he married some woman oh back in the 60s or 70s or whatever and they um, had four kids or something. And he started just leaving all the time. He didn't need to travel, but he would just leave all the time. He had affairs all the time. He was having like 35 affairs a year or something. And so then uh, he would have nothing to do with his wife. He would come and take his kids and take them places, but he would just always ignore his wife. And she didn't get to get counted as a Kennedy or something. And he just like ostracized her, just like used her for breeding and then just put her out. And so, um, but then would keep the kids and stuff. So he just um, continued that behavior and he took the kids somewhere or something and left her. I can only remember what thing because he was just like doing this all the time. And then he left her. And so she went out and did herself in. And then it said that when she was found, she had her hands inside the rope trying to take it off. And then it makes me think like, are we sure that she did it to herself? Because like, there's a lot of shit that goes on up in these families. And um, I mean, that's the same shit Joe did with his. So he could hurry and get to jail the babysitter. 
So he did his family and then tried to be the fucking victim. So he, um, well, his wife and his uh, daughter, and I think another, I think two of his kids died in that, right? Um, so anyways, the, um, so the, the biggest dickhead move to me is so then she gets buried. And so then at night they go in and they take her and they move her. They undig her or they dig her back out of the Kennedy um, estate of graves and they go move her. And then this is even weird because they put her on the outside looking into traffic. And then there was another weird thing. I was like, that is so weird. Oh, so they isolated her and put her on the edge and looking into traffic. And I thought, that is so weird. And it is rude. That does seem rude. Here's your resting place. Wash the traffic and sit by yourself for eternity or something. I don't know. There's like energy behind these things. Like that's the thing. And then, you know, and we could sit there and go like, what a dick, what a dick. But see, we don't know what the, the whole thing, what their whole soul stories are. Like we're just trying to take one little snippet and judge a whole, uh, a whole scenario, a whole uh, sensation, a whole, uh, a whole thing on just a snippet that we're witnessing, and that is why you know you can't get caught up in what other people think about you because they're trying to pull a small snippet out of yours, and you are the one who knows your like your lessons and stuff are inside you. I I swear to God, they're screaming to get you to notice. And it all depends on how much people are willing to take notice and pay attention to how far that they can uh, get the benefit of these type of things. And so if, um, uh, because like to me over, uh, you know, the Morty thing, which, fuck, man, it was fucking heartbreaking. It was, like, very heartbreaking. There's just, like, so many things to it. Like, you know, this little dog that, you know, if he had nobody ever to care about him, like, that really hit hard when it was, like, he's had diabetes for however fucking long, for a long time. He, like, he's in the end stage and lit in uh, his system failure. And he's going into a coma. And like, and I had no idea. I'm thinking like, you know, he's just getting used to the environment. He's trying to get used to the food, the allergies, which, um, so my step or my sister went to go, um, to be with him in the last, she, she met me up at the vets at the vet hospital too. So she was with me that morning when he was being intake and she was, there and asking questions and talking and stuff and getting to see him and spend time with him and saw like what his sweetheart he was. And, um, and that was the thing too, at the vet, everybody loved him too. She said, cause uh, so yesterday when they said that they were going to have to, you know, to take him, put him down, then, um, they'd ask if anybody could be there. Well, I have hours away. And so I had messaged her and I thought she might want to, so I messaged her and she said, yeah, and her boss told her because she was going to go after work if they could wait. But then she didn't want to make him have to wait if he was miserable. And so her boss overheard or something and her boss said that she could leave. So she got to leave work and go there and they set it all up so she could be there with them. And then when she got there, she got to bring him into a room and got to FaceTime me. I was going to make me sob crying again. Oh. <sighs> <sighs> because she got to bring him into like this room and FaceTime me. And, um, so I got to talk to him and he was doing really bad. He was like having a hard time breathing. Like everything was shutting down in him. And he, um, uh, so sad. Um, but he, his one eye was kind of like squinting, but the other eye was open. And when he heard my voice and stuff, he just like looked and, so crazy how is this hit it hit me back and um fuck it was like um in the er in the 90s in the mid 90s I think it was is because we went and there was like two weird things this one week 
and we had gone up to rent a movie at this place. And we went in to rent the movie and we talked to the girl and stuff. He was behind the counter and she was really nice. And so, uh, you know, we never went to this place and rented a movie and, um, or if we had, we had one time, it was like not a place that we went all the time. And so we went in and, you know, we were talking to this girl. We were the only people in there with this girl. We got our movie and we left and went home. Well, the, that week that girl got murdered and it, it, somebody came into the workplace and uh, attacked her. It was real gruesome. And then, um, and there was another one that week too. And both of them I had had in it, you know, like that's one degree. And it's like out, so out of the blue where it's like, you know, why out of the blue, you go and meet this person and talk to them. And then, you know, a couple of days later, they're murdered. And so, you know, I was really asking the questions back then. And I was seeing like so much of like how everything is, it's like, we're all like in this click, 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 click. Like everything is so exactly perfect how everybody interacts and stuff. It's so elaborate. <clears throat> and, um, but when those things happen, they happen for a reason, but it's like, fuck, man, that one hit me hard too. Cause she was just, just this really nice young girl that was really like, cause I would have never even known anything. I, I would have never, you know, I hadn't talked to her if she would have, been, it's just, the whole thing was just weird. And so that was making me think of this because it was just so random. And then he came here and then right away I was having this feeling that like he had come here to die. But then I could see why he couldn't just die in my house. Because if he just died here, they would have never known. Everybody, they had to all see that where the ball was dropped everywhere. No, you know, they're shuffling him around, moving him around. Doctors are not seeing him and stuff like that. And, you know, he needed to be evaluated and they're just and i understand that it's all just so chaotic right now but still we have to see you know what we have to see these things so that we can understand and stuff and so um and then even with the you know when they're sitting there saying like you have a contagious disease and you know and they're just moving him into a house with other dogs and stuff like so i was um it was like showing me so much i was just like what the hell and, um, and then for him to go and then it, it, once they did, they, he was gone in like a second, she said. And, um, and then she even stayed and got his paw prints for me and she's sending them to me. I was just like, oh my God, that is so sweet. What is, ah, so sweet that she went up there and did all that and held him and, um, I don't know. It's really sad because there's so many people who are dropping their dogs off. It's, it's, it's so many right now. I mean, it's got the people working at the shelters just going crazy that they're the ones who keep videotaping these dogs because it's so outrageous that they keep videotaping the how sad it is that they, all these people just keep dropping these dogs off and then they're just getting euthanasia. And, um, and I, I, the, the, the dogs all just are so sad. I don't know. It's just, just, this is like a fucking nightmare. It's like, we're already in this dystopia. I can't even understand how my mom thinks that this isn't the tribulation. It's like, I don't understand how you guys, like, this is how things are going to flip backwards. It's like, you, you got to see that this is the time when we're in this battle. This is, and, and the battle is going to continue. It's going to be changing. People are going to become more directed into, like, you got to save yourself. And not just go out and battle the fucking uh, the, um, gangs and shit like that. It's an internal battle for your soul and everything happening around us is to bring us into this place, this close to home kind of place of, uh, turmoil and stuff. And, but it brings all these things to the surface because then you see like how some people, you know, they want to go out and use their, uh, weapon you know it's like it, all these different things come up in people and so we've seen all these different things come up and play out and you know victims and 
anger and just so much. And this is, you know, like the purge of all this energy that we've been carrying for so long. And so it's these events, these things bring it all to the surface. And that's why you don't want to repress it. You want to let it come out. You don't want to, you know, go get drunk. So you don't have to think about it. No, you want to think about it. You got to think it through. Let Because thinking it through is how you let go of it. Otherwise, it just sits in there. And then the what is, should have, could is build. And the guilt and the shame. And you should have done this. And you should have seen it sooner. You and, and even when I had that awareness, like he was coming to die. Because I could just see it in his eyes. He had just given up. It was like too long and hard. He was just so... And, and, uh, but then I had this, you know, battle. Do I just let him stay here? Do I, you know, just let him go in peace and stuff? And I had no idea he was going into diabetic shock. I thought, you know, he had like, uh, you know, old age and he was having allergies from the moving, the food maybe was, um, too rich for him or something. And, uh, you know, he was an old little guy and, so I was thinking, you know, he was just, you know, kind of dying from being old and not taken care of or something, which that was. But I just didn't, even if he would have got there a day sooner, because even if he would have got there a couple days sooner, right after he first came here, when I was saying he was drinking water and stuff a lot, I don't think they would have gave him much mind. The, the vets are all overwhelmed. I don't think they would have spent a lot of money. They had to check with the, with the fucking place. And, um, I don't think a lot of money would have been spent on trying to, or for evaluations and stuff to see like all his labs or whatnot, you know, and they can sit there and think now like, well, you should have taken him in. Well, he wasn't sh being sick at that time. Saturday when I went and drove the first time and I went over there, especially when I saw that other dog who was so sick and when Morty was looking fine, he went out, he pooped, he peed, he, peed, he was like, you know, it really focused on me and stuff. He wasn't out of it or anything. So, yeah, I would have gone and taken him, you know. I said, well, they want him evaluated. So, I'm going to go to the walk-in clinic and go sit there and wait until. And the place that I've been going all this time, you know, I've been taking the dogs. Because it may seem like, well, that's kind of extreme. I've been driving hours, though. But the thing around here in these mountains roads is the washouts. And they just had a washout at Lake Stevens. So, that's where I would have been. And... And that can be either way. You can be stuck on one side or the other. And, you know, if I was stuck trying to go, then it would have been like, I don't even know how. I don't even know if I would have been able to get to where I was going. But uh, the thing of getting home, and that's what always worries me, especially when there keeps being so much rain and stuff. There's going to be more and more washouts because it's just, we're so fucking wet. Just rain. But right now it's supposed to dry out. But the thing is, too, is that the sun comes. Like, right now it's totally foggy. It's freezing motherfucking cold. And the sun starts coming up. And then it's like they tr crank it up. Which I'm telling you, it smells like this fucking UV light thing. And then it is... um it burst heat. Like if it touches you, it's like a fucking laser hot. But then you walk straight into my driveway and go where the trees are blocking the sun. And it is cold. It's not heating up the air or the atmosphere. It's like a weapon. It's like if it touches you, it's hot. But it's like, so that to me is weird. Because even if, because the sun comes through the trees a little now it's so low, I can't even believe it. Like It, it seemed like it was just dark in my yard the other day. And, and, you know, I have a whole open place. But the sun never goes up there. And it's always way out there. And so, I don't know. But it definitely was not getting warm in the my yard. And so, to me, it's definitely, there's, there's something up with it. But there's lots of different videos and stuff going on. Tons of videos of that orange sky thing. And, uh, you know, the, um, what was it? Because now I'm seeing all these things going so crazy over on the earth. And, but this is where, you know, the earth is, you know, it's, this is this fluctuation happening. This is when all these things are going to start going. Like, uh, I don't know. The places are going to start. 
I know places have already been going underwater and stuff, but there's going to be more of that. Like, it's going to just pick up where places are going to be, like, um, cities becoming way more dangerous. It's like it's... And to me, like I keep saying, it's like the universe is pushing us in a direction. California is becoming so absurd, I can't even believe it. Uh, the stuff that they keep putting into... Uh, you know, and they were putting it all under Newsom's name. And they're saying he's just putting these things through. He's not even having him voted on and stuff. And giving all these illegal people uh, money for houses and uh, no interest loans. Like all this real absurd shit to really piss people off. That to me is uh, the part to get people's reaction. But to also get people to want to jump ship to get the fuck out of California. Because California is becoming such a shit show. And I, but knowing that California is not anywhere, I mean, it's way off that map. Like the, the, the new map is scooted way, way up. And I just saw this other video too, of this kid talking about the map is, um, and he's in Africa and they were asking him questions. And he said that, um, uh, they said, isn't there 53 countries in Africa? And he said, yeah. And he said, so, they were talking about the size and why they make Africa look like it's way smaller than it is when Africa can almost hold the rest of all the rest of the globe inside just Africa. Like, it's uh, the globe. But the rest of the land masses um, on the earth plane can fit. Almost every single one of them can fit into Africa. So, the... Um, or it is that we all can fit into Africa and it's still space. I can't remember. But Africa is huge. And why are they trying to hide that? Like, why are they trying to make us seem like we're bigger than we are and stuff? And that's why, you know, I always get these things about something seems big when it's next to something small. Something seems small when it's next to something. Like, I'm always getting this perspective thing they're showing me. And I know that has a lot with how we see things. And so there's a lot of that is being messed with in our minds or something. And, um, so the, um, yeah, cause it's weird because even where they have people who would, there's people like humans who would think that they're so huge. Well, just wait until you get next to another being and you're going to find out you're very puny. And so, it, you know, it's, um, you know how important it is like right now to be healthy. What was it? I've seen so many different statistic things. Like it's getting scary on the statistics stuff. Like I was like, oh, I can't even listen to this stuff. Um, but the um, something with um, I have smoking coming into my mind. Was it something with smoking? Um some of these things, that's like a whole bunch of things. And then they start getting all mixed up and I can't separate them. It's like, um, like a bunch of videos, you know, all merging in together and I can't separate them to see like what it is, the, the different things. Um, but there is so much like, fuck, just so much, um, so much stuff with all the different cities and the stuff going on, uh, which I feel like is to to get urge people to to ignite the fire inside of them to want something different, and because that's where it all begins is you wanting something different, you changing your focus. You know, it's like breaking programming by you know this isn't what I want. I don't want to live like this. And, uh, you know, and then start putting in what you do want. What do you want to live like? How is it you want to live? Where do you want to live? And, well, it, it doesn't have to be like a, a, a location. It can be like, you know, like, like where you want to live. Like you want to live like by the mounds or you want to live by the beaches or you want to live, uh, you know, like that kind of like picturing your life and your lifestyle. And, but also when you're doing that, you're showing the universe what it is you want and what it is you desire, but it's like they know and they know what you really want. They know what you really desire. So it can be that you all of a sudden you end up somewhere where you were thinking was different, but then you can find things that you were manifesting all around you. And it, because it is like you're, there's still a, a, a ride you're on. 
you still don't have control. That's why it's better to really try and get in tune with yourself and see what it is you're here for. You know, where, where are you? And there's still so much secrecy behind it. Like there's this huge unveiling coming, but there's still so much like secrecy and learning how to trust and to go with blind faith in walking through the door that we're headed into of uh, learning how to trust the universe and trust yourself. And so the, um, so we have all of the, um, because uh, we have a lot of people who are, you know, have been doing the work and stuff and this dragging out puts pressure on them. And then, it, I mean, there's lots of these people I still see who are very in ego and, you know, that they're here to wake everybody up and everybody needs to wake up. But uh, see, to me, waking people up is just being on it, just, you know, st saying my truth, believe, you know, I, um, you know, because my truth is like got a lot of conspiracy theory and then and stuff. But me being truthful and honest, then and it, it doesn't have to be like where somebody has to listen to me and agree with me or something. Because no matter what, if somebody hears anything I say, it's planted a seed. And the universe brought them to get that seed for some reason. So the universe is going to continue to water that seed. And so um, that's where I can feel comfortable and knowing that if somebody is coming for my information, it's because that's what you're supposed to, you, the information is in alignment with you. So it would be, you know, something that you would hold on to. And there's, but there's going to be, there's going to be like these different kind of things that are going to go on with this and stuff. But, um, but for right now, then the people who are, um, healing and stuff and doing all of that work see then it's going to be like they're going to be more role models to the people because there's going to be such a huge amount of people who are going to be just starting that journey to enlightenment which isn't everybody doesn't have to be on a full-on spiritual journey but everybody's going to be a lot more in tune with their spirit and they the um the part of, um, the part of, man, I keep getting, uh, lost. Come on. Because then, um, there's spirit, the part. Oh. oh, yeah. Okay. So the people who, um, you know, don't seem to be awake right now, like I've said, is because they have their impactful moment, the, the moment that they're supposed to wake up to. And so everybody has their own impact points in time. And so once that wakes them up, it's because it is a significant impact on their information, their life journey. And so it has to be in this certain order of things to be what's best for them. And then where these people start getting all in their own ego, thinking they know what's best for everybody and everybody needs to be awakened to what they're awakened to and everybody needs to know this. And, you know, that's a part of it is I was like that in the first part too. Like I wasn't getting it. It's taken years and years to start seeing some of this stuff and to understand it. So the, um, so when I see, you know, these people who all think like they're chosen and, but they're all so mad at these people and stuff, it's like, because you guys haven't fully woke up yet, because when you wake up, you're going to, there's a lot more stuff that you're going to realize. And, uh, uh, you know, the stuff that I keep talking about, about perspective and about everybody's on their own journey and you're not here to save anybody. You're not here to force anybody to wake up. Everybody is playing different roles and everybody's taking things full circle. And like, there's this, this whole thing happening and but the people start waking up and, you know, and I don't know, there's just so much with the triggers and the awakening, it all works together because it brings all these parts of you to the surface. Cause even those people need to see that they are all caught in ego. And if they're not seeing it through the events that are occurring, see that is where the universe is going to do this. Like, lights lights on everybody's gonna see the, the the mirrors right in front of you you're going to not be able to get away from seeing yourself seeing 
the part you play and you play good you play the good guy and the bad guy and in every single thing it all depends on how it affects these other people but it's all for everybody else's learning and growing and stuff so even when you affect somebody and you affect them in the not a way that you want to you gotta let it go because it is how it is for their effect is for them to heal or process or grow through unless you are being a dick to people then you need to you know take you know take it back <laughs> like apologize um you know if you are going around purposely triggering people but if you're just being real and authentic and you're not trying to play games and stuff and people are being triggered then you you know, you, you, sometimes you got to just allow yourself to play the role, even though you don't want to think of yourself as being the bad guy, or you want to think of yourself as being perfect and everybody else has got flaws except for you. And so, um, but we are all, we all have, you know, flaws. We all have parts of ourselves. Uh, we're, we're all in this, this, this movement of change, you know, we're all in this, this, this flux of movement of change. And, you know, just like the river is going. And it's like right now, like if you think of us as the energy and stuff, the inner, the river is, is rising. The river is rising and it's going fast. It's like a, it's like a, whatever, if you were on the rafting thing, it's a four or five, you know, we're, we're right up into this, uh, this change over this, you know, it's like going through this, this river on high speed now, you know, when the, the water's rising and we're going through and anything can impact us. We can hit into any kind of rock or anything can happen. And we don't even know, like, is this river going to suddenly become a waterfall? Like, are we, that's what to me, it seems like, you know, they're trying to take us off the edge they want us to you know go off the edge but that's the thing is there's going to be a change in the currency the current all of that is going to go the other direction and and then we have a lot going on still with the the financial collapse thing going so we still have all that stuff going we have all this weird stuff going on the planet and uh, weird animals weird beings weird things being seen and then sinkholes all of a sudden a sinkhole a woman was just walking down the sidewalk it became a sinkhole in malaysia and uh, they can't even find her they're all digging it down in there they can't even find her because it's probably a portal we've got portals all around us and that's the that's another thing you know and it's like uh so it's kind of like it's kind of like they build buildings over portals like 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 if they know that there's a, a portal if they'll well i don't know I'll probably build a synagogue over it or something uh but they'll build stuff to try and control that but there's still there's portals all around us like there's it's all you know fluctuations of frequency and we all affect the frequency too and then our frequency is what allows us to travel about. And so that is where, you know, we start going through the portals and stuff. But see, that is the, um, that's the thing that I'm saying, though, about this healing thing is the existential crisis or whatever. Everybody's got to, you know, meet their maker is that, that they have this, um, this, the uh the shadow self is the part that you have to face it is this dark side of yourself and it has wounds and stuff and so that's where all this healing begins and that's where we're going to have a huge mass amount of people that are going to go into that stage and then there's going to be a huge amount of people that are going to move out of it's going to be like these stages these levels that people are going to keep shuffling through and so the people who have been doing the work right now, who have been working on themselves and stuff, they see they become role models to the people who are coming in next. So that is, um, you know, that's why you want to, it's kind of like you want to live how you want to represent, you know, like how, how do we want the world to be? 
we want the world to be kind and loving, then we, that's what we've got to be. And, you know, we're moving the energy out of this, you know, this hierarchy of status, this, uh, whoever has the most, you know, is the winner and, you know, uh, more, 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 like there's so much, uh, creation on them. This more, 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 like I was seeing it so clearly the other day over, you know, like the price of things. Well, I want my money's worth. So bring a platter of food. Well, I'm getting all that food. I'm going to eat it because I want my money's worth. And then it's really doing you more harm. But that is, it's all this mind play. See, it's always these mind plays on us. And that's why we got to start getting tuned into our own minds and how they work. Because these fucking three-letter agencies have been fucking studying us for a long time and interfering with how we work. Creating, uh, you know, and then, that, I mean, that's a big problem, too, with this, this impulse control that we've got going. Where everybody's just like fetish. Oh, yeah. They're just like it's not even fetishes anymore. It's just like our way of life. Yeah, we just do weird, pervy things everywhere, all over the place. And, um, and there's some new movie that is out that is, um, Channing, Ch Channing Tatum, Tatum Channing, whatever his name is, his, um, new movie that has got people outraged and the, um, which a lot of people were talking about long legs. I watched long legs the other day and I was like, do people not watch scary movies or something? This just seems like a regular scary movie to me, but, um, and the, and the killer character, you know, is creep because Nick Cage always goes into these weird, creepy people. And you can make into these creep out, creep out characters. So you know, the character, the creepy character, is kind of like a, the creepy clown out of it or something. Like he's a real creepy guy. Then, um, but this one is, um, they said it's doing the same thing, how like, the Blake Lively movie, they marketed it like it was a romantic comedy. And then there's people saying like, she's way too old for the, the character in the book was like 20 years old. And then they're having her play. Like there's a lot of things, but this is all this stuff is, is supposed to be this way. It's supposed to all be out of sync. It's supposed to all be chaotic and crazy because it gets us to talk about things and see things and notice things. And so on this one, this new Channing Tatum movie is, um, it's so disturbing that people are like, and, and this is men and women. I didn't just see just women saying it. Like, there were so many women outraged on the other movie. You know, you're trying to market this as a romantic comedy when it's about DV. And then on this one, I'm not even sure what the deal is. There was the people who I saw said that it's so disturbing that it makes you feel sick that you've even watched it. So I I don't know. It seems like that there's some some pervy uh, like I don't know if it's sex, some SA stuff going on. I'm not really sure, but and I'm not gonna watch that. It's like because there's a few movies where I hear people say it's just so disturbing. It's like I don't want to be disturbed. I don't want to see this stuff that's disturbing. I mean that's all they want that can do is get this shit in our head, program us, and stuff. And then it's like, and then they use like other people to lower your standard or something. And pretty soon we have everybody just out there being pervs. This is like a perverted world. And it's, and then, but we do have so many people who are waking up who are, you know, who are all in tune with their soul where it's like, Ooh, that's gross. That's gross. So the is the gap is growing. And so then the people who are all fetishy, you know, then there will be a standard, a societal shift where, you know, all of us will be like, no, that's not acceptable. And then people are going to have to heal those wounds of the things that they've done, who that they, they are, because when they're not getting you to look at yourself, then you're not seeing yourself clearly. And you will find when you have sold yourself uh, that you will feel bad about it. That's the thing is uh, like, there's a reason why there's so many people who were in porn back when it was really getting going. There was a reason why so many of them were on drugs and stuff all the time is as they were selling themselves out for making money because they prioritize money over their own feeling good about themselves. Because when you sell yourself, 
then you will feel it. You'll feel the impact in your soul. And people, that's where we're going to have so many people who are going to be feeling the impact of their soul when it's going to be so foreign. And their souls are all waking up and knocking at the door. And so many people are feeling so weird and synchronicities and numbers and this is happening and that's happening. And everything is going to get everybody into this, you know, certain way of being more in tune to their souls and living more truthful and stuff like that. But you still, you got to heal everything you did in the dark. You got to heal the things that were done to you in the dark. And you got to let go of things. And and then you got to, it's like, it's not just like put on a happy face, you know, but it is like, you know, let things go and look for the joy in life and then start rebuilding. You can't just be left and be down and stuck. You can't damn yourself up and hold yourself back from moving through the pain of even your own choices. You know, that's where you have to learn how to accept yourself and, um, and then, you know, give, uh, understanding to yourself like it's okay to make bad choices it's okay to do stupid shit you're here to learn from it it's okay to do stupid shit several times because you're learning more uh, uh, more facets of the same situation you're giving it a more broader understanding and then you know then you're going to do it the way you're supposed to do it so don't get all caught up in thinking you know well i'm so stupid they figured this out and i didn't figure it out like that's not the way to go at it your soul has a certain way that it wants everything to come into your reality because it's it's like it's this playing out this thing it has to be like there's a reason why we all have different ways of seeing things and different experiences and different attitudes and different resources and different reference material and stuff it's supposed to be that way there isn't a set structure that we're supposed to follow they you know put that into our heads because they wanted to govern us they wanted to be over us so they tried to create some kind of set structure for us but you know no like if you even went in you went to a like if you went back in time and we were not living the way that we're living now and we were all just living in tribes and stuff and we weren't you know i mean there's lots of mutts now and stuff because of all of their lab bullshit but if um but if we were still more cultured back you know like the polish people the middle eastern people the all the different groups and they were still more in their group then um then there would be, uh, let me think where I was going with that. Um, oh yeah. Okay. Because then when you get the different ones, that is where the culture is developed. So they have these different ways of living. And so you would go to different ones and they totally different ways of living, totally different philosophies, totally different perspectives. And you go to another one, it's going to be the same thing. And so it's not, and it is kind of like the universe bringing us all together and then putting us all back out. And so, because that being in that space of it's only this way is also a space of ignorance. And so us all coming together and seeing all the different ways. So you can take all the different ways that you learn and bring it into your reference. So it gives you a broader perspective. And so the the so how you know how it goes and how it's like this going out and pulling back this energy and stuff so going through these tribes and culture and stuff and then uh, but like if you took us and you divided us all out it would be the same thing we wouldn't all go and be living under these same rulers like with their rules like oh well everybody has to drive this speed everybody has to yesterday when we went on our walk and we she went on one of the long ones so she's real whiny right now too because whenever she does these really long walks i think she gets really sore but so we're walking all around and she really wanted to get back in the woods and they blocked our spot off so she keeps going down trying to find all these places to get in the woods i keep telling her no they blocked it off and back in somebody's yard now we can't get back there and, um, 
So we were walking around out there and they were working on building a house. I think they, there was another one too. And I was just so irritated. And I was just, there was so much coming into my mind with how the city councils, the zoning, the developers, and how they get this land and how then they can, uh, you know, because they have this whole land that they are selling. They could sell it any which way, right? They could sell it off in acre plots and nice big houses like they could do anything they, they choose to make these little quick cracker box pre-houses and cram them all together so they're almost touching and take up as much of that space as possible to make as much money as they can but it's also based on like zoning and stuff like there's so much corruption that goes on back in the back rooms when they are developing places for us to go into and it has all to do with money and stuff like that and um, it was just really irritating me when I was over there. I was like, this is just so disgusting how this control that they have over us and stuff. But see, that is where we have all these people who are in control of our lives and where we don't even realize. And, and then how they drive up the prices on stuff. So even, you know, there's tons and tons of people that don't want to live in neighborhoods that they want to go out and live out, you know, more separated and have little pieces of land for themselves and more independence and stuff. So that is kind of like, um, like our natural instinct inside of us to, you know, want a little space around us or something. And they keep trying to cram us in on top of each other, make us all like nervous and, and more and more people get so many anxiety disorders and nervous disorders and stuff because we're all piled on top of each other and they have no idea. They have no idea of themselves. They have no idea of anything else because everybody's been misled and told this world is different than what it is. And so we have, um, you know, the, this, this creation of chaos and uh, them trying to control us and then take, uh, you know, turn people into criminals and and then they're going to save us from the criminals and arrest and stuff. I, this got me too, because when I was driving on one of these drives uh, to go into Seattle the other day, it was um, a big sign going across the light thing, you know, and it wasn't an amber alert. It said it was a silver alert. So I don't know. I think that's a, you know, an old person who's on the run or something. And so it said the car and the license plate and stuff. And then it said to call this number. And it just reminded me, I think it was Shia LaBeouf. I think that's how you say his name. A movie he was in, but I can't remember if it was a movie he was in, but it was some movie. And it was like that kind of age of a guy or whatever. And it was um, showing that, like, to put that up there, but they're really looking for this person. Like, they're, like, they want us to tell when they're looking for somebody. Like, if all of a sudden if they said, oh, we're going after her, and I, I went on the run, and so then they put this alert up to get everybody to be looking for me. And then the people are trying to turn me over to the people I'm trying to get away from. And so I was like, is it still weird how they, you know, the three letter agencies showed up at the mental place and took that one lady away. And so, um, but this is, this is the world we live in, you know, this is this weird corrupted energy and, uh, and and it's surrounded by ignorance and fear and so and you kind of like have to get over your fear in order to see things clearly you know what I mean because fear holds you trapped in a place where it, 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 it's going to get you it's going to get you it's going to get you and so you have to like let go of that and get your place into a calmer waters bringing yourself into a calm state of mind so that you can think more clearly and that's hard when you get yourself all like built up to pull yourself back in and but it just takes practice and you just have to keep working at it so even if you fail at it and you find yourself in a panic attack and stuff just each time just try and do better and try and do better to figure out how you know and use breathing techniques uh, to me, a lot of it is a mind battle too. And this is weird too, is because somebody was telling me about yesterday about somebody had these, it, it was like 
the way I was hearing it is like they have these voices that are telling them to do this stuff that is harmful to themselves. And I said, well, that's the dark energy. You've got to, they've got to get the dark energy out. But so many people, and I had just seen that same guy who works in the mental hospital saying another one of these stories of a kid who went to a party and did all this plant-based whatever. They're doing so many different things now. All these people trying to have a spiritual thing. It's like, it's right inside you. You don't have to do all this stuff. But, um... So they're doing all this stuff to try and have these crazy trip, trips. And so then it opened him up into this realm where it was, um, you know, these beings that are hateful. I don't know what else to say. They just are beat you down. But it's like they want to hold you in this place where they feed off of you. And so, um, and, and they're around us. And, um... And I don't think of them as demons like other people try and say. I don't think of them like that. And so, um, but it is a dark energy. It is an energy that's uh, based on darkness. And it will beat you down and beat you down through this negative, uh, you know, attack on your psyche. And how much people have to realize the battle is inside of you. You have to speak back to these voices that are under that are attacking you and telling you that you're worthless that you're stupid nobody's gonna love you you're ugly you're fat you're skinny you're flat chested your boobs are too big your butt's too big your butt's too small it's like all that stuff you've got to go back like who fucking cares who fucking cares you know and and but they will they they will beat you down and then they feed off at that energy of you feeling so beat down. And that is where I say, like, every soul has to start recognizing, like, your battle is within you. You have to fucking tell them, shut the fuck up. Get the fuck out of here. And so many people are so confused and they think all these thoughts are coming from inside of them. And to me, it's like, well, why is that more comfortable to you? Why do you think everybody's broken and has all this crazy thoughts instead of everybody is listening to people talking that are energies communicating and that they don't have the clarity of understanding and they think it's coming from inside of them but it's not coming from inside of them it's coming from outside of you and once you start getting into that understanding and talking back you'll see you'll see they'll talk back You'll see that they will, and you can push them away. You can tell them, get the fuck out of here, but you got to recognize it. You got to recognize it when they're beating you down and talking shit on you and talking smack and trying to make you feel like shit or trying to make you mad at somebody or whatever the case may be. And then you got to catch it. And then you got to say, get the fuck out of here. Well, you don't have to say that. You say whatever you want. <laughs> That's what I say. But is, um, you know, however you want to talk to them. And it can, you can start feeling overwhelmed, you know, by this whole spiritual world when you start realizing like, fuck, man, there's things talking in my head. There's things fucking around me. There's like so much going on. And it's, you know, there is, I think it can be uh, like spiritual psychosis because it is a lot. Right now, the way everything is changing and time is falling apart and all this stuff, it is very unnerving you know where you just really have to ground into yourself and you know let things just keep falling apart and falling away and just letting go as things go let go let go let go and um you know i'm and i'm telling you when when you go through things and you get all caught up oh, what am i going to do what am i going to do just keep remembering that you're always going to do what you're going to do and go into your communication, always be, you know, listening to what it is, you know, how you're being led, watch the signs and stuff, because that's another thing so much where you look back and you're like, I was ignoring that sign. I was ignoring that sign. And now I'm seeing more videos of people talking about that too. There was a girl who was just saying that she went on this trip and she was um, in Oregon and she went to go to uh, someplace, I don't know, Philly or something, uh, Florida and to hang out with these two girls and it turned into such a fucking disaster and uh she was telling the whole story and i said Dude, you're lucky that they didn't kill you and um because there's so much of that going on right now it's it's weird and um so she came in at my comment and she said yeah that's the same thing i was thinking 
um, but she had said that um, her, um, all the signs, her gut and stuff were telling her not to go, don't go, don't go. And she still went. That's what you look back on. Those are the things you look back on when you're like, oh my gosh, I was knowing not to go. I was knowing not to do that. I was knowing. And that's where you got to, you know, go in and try and understand yourself. And it's kind of, to me, it's just like fine tuning your communication. You can't do anything about what you've already done except for learn from it. But you can start fine-tuning your communication so you can recognize it when it comes and so that you don't go and do stuff just because you think, well, that's what I want to do. When the universe is telling you, don't go, don't go, don't do that, don't do that. You know, we got another plan over here. But, you know, you're just like, well, I'm going to go do that because everybody, you know, what? and then that's where you got to go in and look at yourself and try and understand yourself. Why did I go do that? Why did I not listen? Why did I think that what I wanted was best? Why did I think that I would know what was best? And so anyways, that's where you are just like learning your communication. You're learning to understand yourself. And there's always more. Is to me, there's, there's so much. Like as soon as you start with your communicating and understanding and stuff, you'll see like it just keeps broadening and opening. And there'll be more and more and more. I like guess kind of like, you know, going and sitting to your guidance, you know, what's the plan for today? What are we doing? You know, and a lot of people would think, okay, well, that's mental. But that is a big part of this too, is the people who um, are still cut off from themselves. Everything seems really, you know, like mental. Now it doesn't, now to me, it's just like, you know, you just don't understand, you know, I, you know, there's a lot of people who are just, going to be beginning to understand but that's the thing is like they have this part that they're going to have to reevaluate in themselves why wasn't i seeing this why wasn't i looking at this why wasn't i understanding this so that is we still have these parts to go through and that's where i'm saying that there's going to be role models so all the people who have been going through this they're going to be showing like how to maneuver through the healing not sitting up on you know their pedestal telling everybody how to do it by my um by my workshop book and do what I say to do and because we're not trying to create cults we're trying to create independence we're trying to create everybody to get in touch with themselves and to find their own guidance and to figure out and recognize what they're doing here so it's not like here, we don't want you to listen to them, but just listen to me. No, it's I'm trying to get people to learn how to listen to themselves, to learn how to trust themselves, to learn how to believe in themselves, learn how to, you know, find find the find the path to feeling better. Because it's out there. You're not stuck where you are. Everything is temporary and everything is an opportunity for a new change or something different. So don't feel like, you know, that you're stuck, you know, like you, you can't make any changes. You can always make changes. You make changes through awareness, but then there's also the, there's certain changes, you know, that you got to wait until the universe opens a door and shows you the way. And, you know, sometimes there's a lot of pressure where you're just like, come on, open the door, show me where to go, show me what to do. And, um, but there's reasons there's, you know, there's all these impactful moments that come into our lives that get us to grow and change and understand and to develop. So, you know, we're still have all these things that are just going to keep going, but there, we are at this, like this head is like, we are, it's like, we're getting to the peak of the mountain and, uh, and it's like, once we are there, then it's going to, everything's going to fall and everything is going to go in this other direction. And it's just, it's so weird, you know, like whatever, you know, I, I have no idea. Like I was, I, I don't know. I was kind of surprised just on the, all of the stuff with the RFK getting so involved, but then it made sense when it had to do with these things, but I don't know all this stuff in all of the things is all to bring stuff to the surface. All everything going is to bring stuff to the surface. So we look at it, we think about it, we talk about it, we bear witness to it, we set a moral compass to it, we develop ourselves because we're developing a, a new society through the breaking down of the old one. And so, anyways, you know, there's just there continues to be a lot going on, 
and you know it's just like every any moment anything can change that's the thing at any moment anything can change and uh, we just you know we're just along for this ride and it's just trippy going into like as you're headed up knowing but it's kind of like being on the roller coaster more than one time knowing like oh there it's gonna go and there it's gonna go but like it's right now it's like we know something's about to go but we just don't know when we don't know how hard it's gonna hit us we don't know where it's gonna hit or any of that kind of stuff and so, and it's going to be a lot of hitting all over the place, but there's going to be some places that are really hugely impacted in different ways. So, you know, we just got to keep going with the flow. We have no choice. <laughs> like if we're here and we're here for, we're here for this. If we're here, we're here for this. And it's like, you got to open yourself up to you to try and understand what you're here to learn from all this and what you're here to do and what you're here to accomplish and, um, you know, and then just try and really recognize your ego and, you know, and get it in balance because there's, this place has got people way in their ego is way like the ego's cranked up and their soul's cranked down. And that's where you got to get back into balance. And that's why the soul is going to come on loud and clear. And then it's going to be like very traumatic for a lot of people like. People are going to be very shocked by themselves. They're not. They're not going to see it coming, and it's going to be very strange. It's going to be weird to witness this. I think because it's going to be on such a grand scale. There's going to be so many people when things turn the other direction, and there's so many people who think they're awake, and they're still thinking. You know, that we're going off the cliff. Uh, there's so many people that just don't understand about the cycles. And that this is uh, the pole shift. This is where everything shifts and goes the other direction. So, and, uh, you know, and I don't know how it's going to be like. Uh, there's people now freaking out because on the 20, the, the one that's with the 25, which now this little bit that I heard this guy saying, it made me think, huh, are they pulling bits out of the 20 with the three zero and putting it into this other one? Because if they say this other one is what this, you know, Donald's going to do, then they get attention. When you say, oh, the, you know, the WH is going to do this 30, then everybody's just like, la, la, la. But then you say, Donald's going to do this. And they're like, what? What? Ah, give me that fucking. And they all listen. So there's a lot of that kind of stuff. But the one that I heard him saying was that they're saying that they're going to go down to 90 million. Well, that was a, that's, that's something I keep seeing. So that might, you know, I don't know, but that's definitely out of the, the 30, that's definitely out of the guide stones and stuff. Like that's definitely the, they've been saying they're about to do a huge reduction. So, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, you know, we just, the whole thing is we all have to wait and see and man, and loss is painful. Like, fuck, I can't believe how much uh, pain I feel over a little fucking Morty. Just the pain of like this little sweet dog. Just never had anybody who really loved it. Well, you got to have, you know, and I, and I, and I, since I knew so, I just felt it so strong. Just no matter how many times he woke me up in the middle of the night, how many times, you know, he peed on the floor or whatever, I just kept being loving to him. I wasn't trying to train him or anything like that. I just wanted him to feel love because I thought, you know, I felt like he was in his last days. So anyways, you know, and, and, and this is why it's important too to be true to yourself, because if I would have been like mean to him or anything, and I would just be so haunted right now, it would just be eating me alive. So that's why I try and say, you know, how you go and put yourself out there will have an effect on you, how you look at yourself. And so in having the awareness that you will have this observation of self or the self-reflection or self-understanding that you can't get away from yourself. And it's just so crazy because there's so many people who just want to escape from themselves and they just want Jesus to take it away from them. Like all that is all coming, you know, to the surface right now too. But the biggest thing is, you know, facing yourself and understanding yourself and developing yourself. So... Anyways, it is important to be mindful of any time you're going into anything to know that you are going to reevaluate your actions and to really go at it mindfully. Think about it. Think it through 
because there will be a real evaluation. There always is. <laughs> there always is. Well, I don't know. I, there's some people who probably go through life and don't ever think about what they do. Never reevaluate, never think about anything. They just go, you know, like a wrecking ball. But I wasn't being a, like a thoughtless wrecking ball, like just hitting into anything. It was just like, it was just weird how I started realizing like everywhere I would go, it was like, everything started showing it was weird it was really weird but I definitely noticed it when I was working at this one ER um Deaconess and uh, it really stood out to me and it was always drama followed me everywhere I went in all these different ones like I could fucking break it down and tell all these different weird things but I, it's because you know, some of us were like a catalyst of energy. We were bringing in a, a like a, a spotlight into a place. And a lot of people were uncomfortable. But it's because of the, how we would look at things and how we would see things. We would see the things that other people were trying to hide or not pay attention to. And then people don't want those things pointed out. And so, <clears throat> anyways... um you know, and I know that there's lots of people who have had those experiences. A lot of people have noticed like, fuck, man, and being a catalyst can be hard and it's rough, you know? And so any of the things that any of the roles, any of the things you've played out in this life are all things for you to process through. And they're all attached. These aren't just new things. They're attached to past lives, past situations, past people, all an entanglement of the soul. So you just have to continue to process through. And that's the part where people need to be focusing on. Not focusing on all their distractions, but focusing on their feelings and focusing on getting to understand themselves and know themselves and heal themselves. So anyways, that's my rant for the day. So just remember to the more what we're doing here. We're learning how to love ourselves, love everyone, and how to have a loving day because it's up to us. So I'll talk to you later. Bye.